Well, hello there and welcome to, back to our Project Plus uh, dive. Uh, this is our fourth video in the series and today we're going over project management concepts 33% and bullet point 1.4. Given a scenario, perform risk management activities. Okay, uh, We're getting our information right from CompTIA's exam objectives. I'll link to this down below. and. Uh, so if we look here, we're still in domain one, project management concepts, 33%. We're on 1.4, given a scenario, perform risk management activities. Let's go. So with risks, you have to realize we have known risks and we have unknown risks. Known risks are things that can be identified, analyzed, and planned for in advance. Unknown risks are unpredictable and arise unexpectedly. So an example of a known risk would be budgetary. We spend too much or we're, our budget changes. We have regulatory come down upon us and make some changes. And now we have to change to meet the regulatory requirements. Or maybe we have a resource shortage. Someone leaves the organization. These happen all the time. We need a plan for them. They are known risks. Unknown risks are things like an economic downturn, a cyber attack, a natural disaster. These are things that we can't uh, know when they will occur, or even we might not even have much uh, foreknowledge of it occurring. So how do we mitigate these? So to mitigate a known risk, we do a risk assessment. Uh, we have plans that we make for contingencies. We be proactive in our monitoring for these. When it comes to unknown risks, we try to build some flexibility into our project. We maintain reserves. We have uh, an adaptive risk framework that can help us uh, develop ways to respond to these unknown risks. So, general risks. If it's a new project, we lack historical information on it. We might not know how to do something. It might be an unclear scope. It might be untested technology. It might just be we have never done it before, so there's a learning curve. We don't know how um, long it will take us to do. So, to mitigate things like this, we conduct feasibility studies. We do pilot programs and we apply lessons learned from similar projects. Maybe we have new management. Uh, with a shift of leadership comes a shift in priorities. Um, they might have a different way of doing decision making and might cause disruptions on the team. So we need to make sure that we can ensure a knowledge transfer and define roles clearly and maintain a stakeholder alignment. If a new manager comes in, uh, make sure that the, the buy-off of the stakeholders um, still applies to them and see if maybe something needs to change. Regulatory environment changes. So we have we have to comply with laws and industry regulations. And they do shift regularly. So uh, these can affect our project requirements. So how do we mitigate these? We need to monitor the updates. Maybe be involved um, if you're large enough. Uh, have compliance experts. Maintain documentation uh, for potential audits, right? Um, maybe even 
pay someone to lobby for you, for your stuff so that things change in your favor. Digital transformation. Um, so maybe adopting new technologies can lead to things being better, but also they can have integration challenges. There's also a resistance to change. Um, people don't like to do something new. So there's, it's something that you have to uh, weigh in. Do you want to make this change and have the disruption that comes with it? Um, and if it's something new, are there going to be vulnerabilities that you're not aware of? Um, with implementing this, is there change management strategy? How are you going to train your employees? Uh, is it going to, what type of a rollout is it going to be? Is it going to be everyone at the same time or is it going to be phased? When it comes to infrastructure and end of life things, so some, th some systems they just are obsolete. They're unsupported and they pose security risks. We need to plan to upgrade these and to maintain them and allocate the resources to modernize them. Uh, conducting risk assessment for outdated technologies is interesting because the, the mitigation strategies, there's fewer as the technology gets older because people just aren't supporting it anymore. Uh, one of the places that I worked, we had a die, die, die list where if something died, the, our uh, thought was, we will find a way to replace it. We are not resuscitating the system uh, because it was so unsupportable. Uh, merger and acquisition. Uh, risks is that there's there's cultural clashes that happen. Maybe people are worried about not keeping their job when a merger or acquisition uh, happens. Uh, they their, tech, their skills might be obsolete and and that worry is going to affect their performance. Um, it can cause major disruptions. There also might just be a misalignment of goals between the two organizations as they're merging or being acquired. So make sure that if something like this is happening during a project that you have clear roadmaps, you're communicating clearly as well. Um, to the organizations uh, where you're at, what, what needs to be done, and try to have a unified governance for a project that's in progress. Uh, reorganization. So changes in team structure or, uh, might result in loss of knowledge in that area. Maybe someone even leaves, and that's why things are shifting around. So priorities might have to change for the organization in order to keep things going. And that can impact the resources assigned to the project. So uh, clearly define new roles and responsibilities early um, and document and communicate changes to all in, in needed parties. Maybe there's a major cybersecurity event that happens. This happens all the time. Um, there's a data breach, a ransomware attack, or just personal identifiable information, PII, gets leaked. Um, that can cause uh, lawyers to get involved and people to be removed from a project uh, while, while legal issues are, are considered. Um, it's good to have may robust cybersecurity policies. There are a lot of organizations that are requiring IT individuals to be certified so that they are more aware of the cybersecurity uh, issues that may occur so that um, hopefully more can be uh, defended against. But have an incident response plan because no matter how good you are, um, there's, you only have to make a mistake once for hackers to be able to get in. And sometimes they are just ahead of you. So common risk responses. Have a contingency. And 
apply it appropriately. So a contingency plan is a just a, it's a predefined course of actions designed to respond to specific risks when they occur. The purpose is to minimize disruption, reduce the negative impacts, and enable quick decision making. So there's negative risks. So these are threats, uh, risks that pose a threat to the project's success. Um, strategies to handle them include accepting the risk. Maybe you just acknowledge it, but you're not going to do anything about it. Um, it might be a minor risk. It might be a big risk, but that's just what has been chosen. That's, that's sometimes hard. Um, you might choose to avoid the risk, which means you don't do something. So you eliminate the risk by deciding not to do something. Or you mitigate it. You take proactive steps to reduce the likelihood of it occurring. So putting additional checks in the way to make sure that it, it's less likely to occur. Or maybe you transfer the risk. This is like getting insurance. Or if it's uh, maybe you pay someone else to do it and it's kind of an as a service model. Sometimes the risks are positive. These are opportunities. And then you can accept it. You can enhance it to make it more likely to occur. You can exploit it to try and make it a priority. And then you can even share it. Okay. Um, continuing this, when you're looking at risk analysis, there are different ways of looking at it. So qualitative. Qualitative um, risk analysis prioritize risks based on their characteristics um, rather than numerical data. Numerica would be the quantitative. So this is sometimes seeing if uh, how likelihood it's going to be just using your best judgment. Sometimes we try and um, qualitative risks are, are harder for a lot of organizations to handle. They're often interconnected with other things. Um, so one risk can trigger or amplify other risks. Um, Sometimes we can detect them before they happen or right after they happen, and we can do things to, to keep them in check. So quantitative risks are something that we can apply a number to. So we can put mathematics in play and, um, and see how it uh, occurs. We can even simulate it. Uh, looking at the impact analysis, what's the probability versus the impact? So oftentimes we look at probability, it's as low, moderate, or high. And the impact, same, low, moderate, or high. We, we worry more about something that's a high probability and a high impact than if it's a low probability and a low impact. And then we evaluate how a project would be affected under these by simulating it or doing a scenario. Still continuing on. Um, the connection between risks and challenges. Uh, risks and project challenges are closely linked. When a risk materializes, they often lead to product, project changes, sorry, risks and changes. Uh, and changes can introduce new risks. So one of the challenges that we have is if something bad happens, we immediately want to do something to fix it. If we don't take a step back and think, sometimes what we do to try and fix it makes it worse. Um, I often think about this when I think about employees. Uh, and sometimes 
uh, you have an employee that their confidence outweighs their skill. And those are the ones that you really worry about this. Um, Because something bad happens and they're like, oh, they have the confidence, they'll fix it. They go to fix it and they don't have the skill to fix it properly and they actually make it worse. But then their confidence is still there. And so they go to fix what they've made worse and they just, it, they keep making it worse. Uh, and they don't know when to stop and ask for help. So changes introduce risk. Not changing also introduces risks, risk. But we need to be um, careful. And risks will often lead to changes which can introduce more risk. So roles and responsibilities. By the way, taking a step back, it can introduce more risk than doing nothing. Okay, so you have to manage uh, the change versus accepting the risk. So roles and responsibility. Um, Not all risk can be handled by the project team. Sometimes we have to escalate them. Uh, that's what, where the sponsors and stakeholders are. Risk can be escalated based upon impact, urgency, scope. Uh, and then it, it risks should have an owner though. They should be assigned to a specific owner. Okay, well, that finishes 1.4. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next video, which will be 1.5. Thank you.